NFR Extra is a weekly podcast that focuses on the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo and features icons that embody the rodeo and Western lifestyle. What does the 26-time NFR qualifying Wright family think about their brand spanking new Yeti bottle caps? The chug cap, perfect for drinking on a horse. Some wonder if it's a cup or a cap. It's both. I never let go of my hot shot. <sighs> the mad dog. Burr. The Mad Dog. Is it Doc? Mag Doc. Because I don't like losing. The Straw Cap. It just pops up. It's civilized. It's the only thing in my saddlebags. There's even a magnet in here. It's not a sippy cup. I endorse this cap. And what about Lily? I like them all. What are we supposed to do with these? Is this a, mo is this a movie? This is Nevada Colwell, and on this episode of NFR Extra, Extra, Bill Neff, Vice President, Consumer Marketing at Yeti, joins the show to answer questions from NFR fans about Yeti the brand, product development, and more. Yeti, built for the wild. This is an insert from Judith Hoekauer at Inc. Magazine. Forget mousetraps. Build a better cooler. Brothers Roy and Ryan Cedars seized upon that idea in 2006 when they launched Yeti Coolers, an Austin-based business that sells extra rugged, grizzly-proof coolers designed to keep ice from melting for longer periods of time. Yeti products can retail up to 10 times as much as coolers sold in big box stores like Walmart. Still, outdoor enthusiasts have fallen for the brand, hook, line, and sinker. When customers are passionate about your product, explains CEO Roy Siders, price is no object. Howdy, I'm Bob Tolman, and this is NFR Extra. Today, we're joined by Bill Neff, Vice President, Consumer Marketing at Yeti. Welcome to the show, Bill. Ah, appreciate, appreciate you having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, here we go, Bill. This is... Uh, it's coming from Peyton Benight, right? This is uh, from Instagram. She says, what is the best method of keeping the consumer engaged while functioning as a multi-community market, i.e. Uh, fishing, hunting, rodeo, rock climbing, etc." It's a really good question. And it actually is a, it is a, um, it's a question that's really, uh, I could, I could probably talk an hour on it, but it's also a question that, you know, at Yeti, we really look at in a very simplistic view. Um, and so where we think about, and I'll just give a quick for the audience for, if you don't know who Yeti is or kind of where we came from, you know, we started in 2006 and the brand started as, is really a, a in the fishing community. And it was, um, a cooler that was built, uh, for the, the bow of a boat, uh, for a casting platform. And so it was really about durability. It wasn't really about ice retention at the time. Um, ice retention was just an, an added value. It was really about, could this cooler hold up to standing on it, um, for, for really a lifetime. And, and so the fishing community, um, I think our founders would have, would have, um, I, I don't think they saw Roy and Ryan probably didn't see the amount of communities that would start to, um, engage with, with the product. And so as we started to grow, all of it was happening really organically. And as we started as a fishing company, it was pretty natural for that hunting community, whether you're, going on a whitetail hunt, you need a cooler to keep that meat um, fresh on your, your trip back, or it was for spike camp or anything else. The cooler really quickly, organically w w came into that. And we would have, I, I really believe we could have been a Cabela's Bass Pro brand for, for, 
forever. And as the, the, the group back then, and this was before my time, started to really listen to where this cooler was going, one of the, you know, one of the first communities that came on was this sort of this overland whitewater community that was in the desert for extended period of time. They needed a cooler that would really hold that ice. It wasn't really about durability as much as it was truly about holding that ice. And, and that's where kind of the durability and the ice retention started to come. But another community that was really important to us um, and that we, we started to find out were you know, we're a Texas company and ranching is a huge thing down here. And one of our first communities was this ranching community that would spend long days out, out, you know, do a work. Um, and they needed coolers that would keep that ice and it's hot as heck down here in Texas. And, and it became a staple within that community. And so as these communities started to organically come on board, it wasn't at that time, we never thought we would be advertising in a rock climbing magazine or a surfing magazine. It was really about um, creating these relationships with these communities that that um, that that were really natural, very organic. And so when we talk about, and so I could talk about that for an hour. I really <laughs> could about how it continued to grow and continue to kind of branch out organically. Not, hey, we want to be a barbecue company. We're going to go and do this. We heard from the pit masters that were using our our coolers as as you know, to keep their meat warm. And so it wasn't about cold anymore. It was about thermal regulation and they were using our coolers to rest our, their meat and, and in catering and things like that. So, um, and so we we're like, Hey, this is cool. And the simplistic form of it is honestly, if you think about your friends, if you think about your friend group and you, some of them may have been from kindergarten and other, other friends have been from, college. And usually when those groups get together, one, there's a commonality between all the groups, but we really look at the communities that we're in and we treat them like you would treat your friend group. And, and so this COVID-19 thing has always, has really thrown in a huge, it's, it's thrown in a huge wrench into, you know, we, we look at, at our sponsorship dollars and, the things that we spend money on within these communities as true support. You know, we aren't, we really aren't a huge um, company that go after just hanging banners and trying to get our name out there. Now, if hanging banners is part of what supports an event, then we want to do that. And, but we want to do it in support of, of, of the community. Generally speaking, I'll just bring up, I'll bring up, um, yeah, I mean, the NFR or the Calgary Stampede or any of these rodeos that we get involved with, it's, it's important to that, to that world. It's important for those, those people to have those traditions where they go to these events and those events need sponsors or those things go away. And, and so for us, it's, it's important that we support those events for those communities. And that's the mindset we look at it. Just like within your friend group, if the support within those spaces, you know, within that group is, Hey, I need a cup of sugar. And you run over there and you give them a, a cup of sugar. It's, you don't even think about it. It's just something that you do. Um, you don't really expect anything back and you just believe it's part of the way that you communicate with your friends. And we really take that lens with most of the communities that we, that really with all of our communities that we, that we start to engage with this COVID-19 thing is, has really thrown a loop because some of our fishing communities, like those outfitters are really struggling right now. And those captains are really struggling. And so maybe an event we were going to do, that's not where the support is needed within that community. So our team is really working on how does, how, what do people need right now through this? And, you know, we have a culinary, you know, component to what we do. And we, we call on the barbecue community and the beer community and, and how can we help, in this time, keep their lights on. And it's, um, you know, knowing that, that, you know, we have to secure our own oxygen mask also through this, through this time, but how can we continue to help, um, you know, in, in this, in this time period? So how do we deal with, um, kind of the, do we really deal with them individually? It's not a blanket thing where, Hey, we're going to, we're going to do this across all the board. We, we work and we have a community marketing group that works really well within 
those those communities because the culinary community is much different than the rodeo community or the ranching community, which is much different than the climbing community. But we find ways to just well, just like your friend group, they're all different people. They're all very different, and you like some of them because of some reason, and others because of other reasons. You can count on some for some and some for others. But generally speaking, when you when you when you bring those people together, there's usually this commonality that 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 really starts to thrive, and and your group becomes more diverse, and it and it becomes um, really a really a cool uh, a cool place to hang. So that's the lens that we that we look at is that. No communities are the same, and they all, but they're really important to us. And and we, we just, that's why when we enter one, we usually go really slow. And just like you would with a new group of friends, is you're not going to be the, you know, the comedian in the room on the first time you show up to a party. You're going to, you know, be humble and, and listen and get to know people and shake their hands. And, and that's what we, that's what we try and do, so. We will be back with Bill Neff, the Vice President of Consumer Marketing at Yeti. And when we come back, we talk about how Yeti plans to maintain its superior market share. In 2020, more than 7,000 kids will compete for the coveted 750 spots at the Junior World Finals in Las Vegas, presented by Yeti. Each qualifier will go head-to-head for more than a half a million dollars in a championship buckle in the biggest rodeo youth event in the country. This could be the first stop on the road to a pro rodeo car in a gold buckle in Vegas. Find out how your son or daughter can earn the right to compete against the best at the Junior World Finals, presented by Yeti. Do you need a dose of social? A dash of insider info? Then the National Finals Rodeo Social Network is set up just for you. Get updates, insights, unique content, and much more on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. You can find us at Las Vegas NFR. And be sure to use hashtag WranglerNFR on your post and tweets. There's something for all rodeo fans. This is the NFR. This is Vegas. Hi, I'm eight-time world champion bull rider Donnie Gay, and you're listening to NFR Extra. We are talking to Bill Neff from Yeti. Yeti targets the niche markets of high-end hunting and fishing enthusiasts, outdoorsmen, and beachgoers, plus a lot more. And this is coming from um, a guy by the name of Misty R. Queering, is uh, with so many new players entering the market with similar products, i.e. Ozark Trail, uh, RTIC, et cetera, how is Yeti planning to maintain its superior market share? That's a, that's a pretty good question, and definitely with where we're at right now. Yeah, you know, I, we don't spend much time concerning ourselves with, with our, our competitive, you know, set, uh, whether it be drinkware, there's a different group and coolers is a different group. And now we're so far beyond just coolers and drinkware. We have cargo boxes and we have, you know, true, we have camp chairs and, 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 you know, waterproof duffel bags and backpacks. And so we, we continue just to build our product line out to where we feel, um, we, we feel it's addressing needs or gaps within, within, um, within, you know, a more general agnostic mindset and, and just like our Tundra back in the day. So normally we don't we, like, we don't find ourselves and most of our products will fit within multiple communities. And that's kind of, that's something that we really, um, we really like and we would like to share within those communities. The, um, um, so we don't, really concern ourselves about that. What we concern ourselves are, are how can we ultimately support the ones that are supporting us? And we've just been really fortunate to, um, to have some of these communities really, really, um, you know, believe that the product, uh, you know, holds up for them and, and is a part of, you know, what they're, what they do on a, on a daily basis. And, yeah. and so, there's always going to be competitors and truthfully a good competitive set will make everyone better within that competitive set. And as that, and when that happens and you have, you have people pushing each other to innovate and continue to bring out new stuff, the consumer always wins Mm -hmm. and the consumer wins because the products will continue to get better and better. So, you know, we have an innovation center just down the road from us that we're constantly trying to, to, you know, push, um, and test and research and make sure that the product we put out is, is 
you know, what we believe to be the best, the best product in the market. Well, that leads into this next question from Eric Berner. Uh, this is from Instagram. And I like this cause I've, you know, as I've gotten to turn on, I've been with LVE Las Vegas events for six years and I knew of Yeti, but then because you guys were a sponsor and I, I work in the digital multimedia side, um, got to look at a lot what you guys do and I love how you market and, and what you show, how the product works and a lot of the YouTube videos and the fun stuff. But you know, the part that I love is, and then to this question is how does Yeti approach read? How do you, how do you guys approach research and development to create better products? And does that through that process sometimes create new products? Yeah, it definitely, it creates new thinking. And so our innovation center is set up to break things. I mean, it legitimately is set up <laughs> to find out where the failure points are on all of our products. And, you know, our, our job is the product team is to, is to make something and then ultimately design something and engineer something that they have a very difficult time of getting to that point. And so that, that's what, that, that's what it is. I mean, we have two sides of, of, of design engineering product that will ultimately um, come up with something that will put through our innovation center and, and they will be the one to test it. And, and through that testing and through that research, and then ultimately you always find innovation, whether it's thinking that is applied immediately or thinking that is applied to product on the line, the, just the ebbs and flows of that, um, of that dynamic of that team setup is just constantly asking us questions on how we can make it better. And, and, and sometimes our ideas on paper aren't good. And sometimes our idea on paper are, can't be done. And sometimes the ideas on paper, um, don't make sense. But a lot of times those ideas really spark some, some, they always spark some thoughtful conversation around how can we continue to push and, and create products that, that bring benefit to, to the people that, that use them. Hmm. No, that's, uh, you know, I love the thinking that you guys have a product that you take it beyond just saying, okay, we're just coolers or what, you know, whatever you may be or may not be, you take it beyond that. And I like how you share that with your community because then that obviously creates, you're showing the education side of how you went about making, saying that these aren't just the best coolers, but here's why we believe these work and you show it through these, these multimedia platforms, which creates a lot of confidence in your product. I I, I love the the approach switch gears here. This is, Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, switch gears though. Like this is more of kind of the promotional side and, and where you guys are involved with, you know, rodeo, ranching, fishing, everything that exists. Does Yeti plan on adding more professional cowboys or more, let's just say it's celebrities within this business and, and using them to promote, you know, your products and involving them within showing off your products. I mean, is is there more plans in that? Yeah, I will continue. Our ambassador program through all of our communities is really important to us. We have probably a hundred and oh, a hundred and thirty ish uh, ambassadors um, through all of the all the communities, and um, they. It, but it takes a, it takes a while, and we're really we're really um, they're really important to us because they they ultimately are the ones that help us um, be, you know, stay relevant to those communities. And if Luke Branquino was like, yeah, I don't really use any of this product anymore. That's a serious problem for us because we are losing the relevance. And we really believe in every, some people will call us a lifestyle brand and things like that. But the truth is, our product has to remain relevant in their lives. And if it remains relevant in their lives, whether you're Conrad anchor or whether you're JD Mooney, it needs to remain relevant in their lives. And if it does, then we believe we have the authenticity to continue to communicate with those, those, those people that, that are within those spaces. And, and so our ambassador program isn't about, it isn't an influencer program. The awareness that we get through the ambassadors is almost a hundred percent a derivative of the relevance we get from those ambassadors. 
And that's why um, we don't ask them to really do much at all. We don't ask them for social posts and we don't ask them for, for any of those things. We really just, um, we want them to be themselves. And if they're themselves and they are product organically integrates within their life, then, then it's working because they have networks and they have families and friend groups and they have all those things that we believe will percolate. And so for us, ambassadors are always incredibly important to us. It takes usually a while to get someone on board. We want to know that they use our product, that they like our product, that they like our brand, that, um, and so there's a, there's usually a, uh, just a get to know each other sort of, um, phase where, where we just, because if our product doesn't work for them, then we don't, we don't want them to, or, or they don't really use it that much. We, we, we wouldn't want them that to, to, you know, say to their fans or their audience, Hey, this is, you know, I endorse this. If it doesn't really integrate into their lives, that's their authenticity to their audiences is as important to us as our authenticity is to, to them. And, and so that, that's something that we really, that we really make sure that we're really smart about is when we do officially sign someone as an ambassador, that we, it, it's so much more than, Hey, this is a three year deal and we'll, we'll reevaluate when it's over. We sign these guys and we know their life on, on, you know, performing specific to the rodeo or surfing or whatever is limited. But most of the, you know, a lot of our ambassadors are retired and they're just kind of the people that, um, you know, that have, have paved the way for so many people and can continue to teach and, and, and they help us navigate the space and they help us do, um, you know, be relevant in the space and they introduce us to people. And, and so for us, the answer is, are we going to add more? Yeah, for sure. But we, but we don't have like a number and we don't like chase, Hey, we want to add 20% this year or whatever. We'll, um, we will, you know, we're, we're starting to be more global. So we're looking at other countries and, and who are the people that line up there, but it is a process and it isn't just about a follower count. We don't really care about that. Um, it isn't, it, that's not what's important to us. What's important to us is their relevance, uh, our, the product's relevance to them. And then their um, and then they're, you know, want to be, um, involved with, with, uh, with Yeti and, and that's what we look at. So, yeah. You know, so one of the things that's working in digital media and then the, the kind of the, the new tools that are popping up and I think kind of your guys' world definitely plays ball in this is that, you know, now you can measure things within social media, right? You can actually grab impressions of your logo and how many times it pops up with an Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, and even on YouTube, and what I like about your guys' stuff is that you don't, because people use this in such a general product when it comes to how it works within all these communities, you you can measure stuff without even truly asking anybody, right? There, th- that logo pops up a lot within, you know, somebody's camping, you know, they're posting pictures or somebody's out hunting or, I mean, I see it everywhere. And we measure it from our end. We, you know, we use a company, kind of just drop this on them, but it's uh, MVP Index. They're down there in Austin by you guys. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they, they work with NBA mm-hmm. and PRCA. You may have heard of them. And there's a few groups out there that are doing yeah. this now. But I love it because rather than, you know, you get all these kind of false numbers, you get true, true tangible data through social. And definitely because of where you guys exist, a lot of great imagery comes out of this stuff. And what a great way to... You know, hey, number one, oh my God, I didn't even know that. Just, I'm just making it up. But Le- LeBron James, who goes out on his camping trips all the time, totally making this up. But he uses all of our products, and and for the past couple of years, he is a fan of Yeti. But yet, you know, you're not engaging him. He's not engaging him. But it, but it, it's already being, it's already there, right? I mean, it's it's kind of existing. Yeah, that's what I love about your guys's products, man. It's uh, pretty fascinating. Yeah, so, we're fortunate to have a logo that pops. You know, um, that that is that's nice. And that's just, that's just dumb luck. I think. But. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I don't know if you ever read, um, shoe dog with about, uh, Phil Knight, but when you find out oh, yeah. about, you know, oh, yeah. how he came about all that stuff that came out like, Oh my God, my back's against the wall. I got to make a decision. Right. There was no, uh, 
uh, focus yeah. group and you know, all these multiple artists coming up with all these ideas. When you think about how powerful the brand is, it, I mean, you guys are along that same kind of that, that same uh, blend where it's like, it's just all part of a natural fluid process. And I, the product's great, man. It really is. I think Nike does it, this type of marketing better than, better than anybody on the planet. And they do it. And there's a few brands that do it really, really well, but they do it so good um, for every, for every, you know, big marketing campaign they do, they also sponsor thousands of high school basketball camps that no one knows unless you're there. And they talk to those communities very intimately in a way that, that, that the average person that's um, 45, you know, that I, I don't, I don't see them as much, but they are there and they are doing the work in the underground tunnels, sponsoring stuff and supporting those places that are important to them. And that is, they, and that's, that's the mentality we take. And if you read Shoe Dog and if Roy Peters, our founder ever, ever actually writes a book on Yeti someday, it is almost identical. The, their paths from being an importer of a different product to the manufacturer, not wanting to make changes that they wanted to make, to developing their own thing to not having any money to going into their network of people that can help them with third party avocation. And you have Prefontaine with, with, with Phil Knight and you have uh, flip palette with Roy Cedars. And it's like the whole thing is, is very similar. And, um, and so anyway, you brought that up, but it's one of those books that <laughs> I absolutely um, could read a hundred times. Let's take a break with Bill Neff, the VP of consumer marketing at Yeti. And when we return, we'll learn more about Yeti International and new products on the horizon. Each year at Cowboy Christmas, more than a quarter million country western shoppers mingle with NFR contestants, Flint Rasmussen, and the best junior cowboys and cowgirls in the world. There's no place in sports where your rodeo heroes find time to meet and greet their fans 9 to 5 every day. Cowboy Christmas. It's shopping, live music, rodeo, and so much more. Book your reservations and find out more at NFRExperience.com. Cowboy Christmas. It's all here. Hi, I'm 23-time world champion cowboy Trevor Brazil, and you're listening to NFR Extra. We are here with Vice President of Consumer Marketing at Yeti, Bill Neff. Yeti sponsors events throughout the country for professional outdoorsmen, hunting and fishing shows, and of course rodeos, including the Junior World Finals in Las Vegas. This is from Sarah Cook. She says, we are blessed in UK and love your products, but unfortunately, bringing a cooler home on the plane is not feasible. Are there any plans to market products in the UK? Yeah, I I did. Uh, um, I heard about this question come my way, and I want to tell Sarah that we are up and running. We have an office over there and people working in the UK and and Europe is up and running and Australia is up and running and Canada is up and running. And so the UK, and I'll just say it out loud just for the sake of, um, of, you know, for, for Sarah, but uk.yeti.com is, is the UK's website and the eu.yeti.com. And you can, we're, we're selling product over there. So nice. we're up and running. All good. No, it's, uh, it was pretty interesting. So yeah, it, it kind of switched. We get some just general questions. It's just kind of fun stuff, man. You, and by the way, great yep. stuff. Thank you for sharing. Uh, but this is from Brylin Bentley. She says, what's your go-to Yeti product for day-to-day life? So I get asked this a lot and drinkware. So bottles and, and cups I, are automatically a throwaway. So if anybody, if I ever ask that question, I, they, they're, you're not allowed to say cups and bottles because for a lot of us, it's an easy cup of coffee in the morning or water through the day. And yeah, those probably get used the most. But truthfully, my go-to product is our Camino carry-all. So it's a basically a tote bag that you just, it's open-topped, waterproof everywhere else. So you can sit it in the beach you can, or in water. You can sit it, you can take it to the beach and all those places. But really... For every day, just throwing stuff in and out of there. I got four kids, and it's the it's the quickest, easiest access product that that um, that we make. And so, from going to the gym or going to a kids' soccer game or whatever else it may be, it's 
to me, the Camino Carryall is my go-to product for Yeti. Nice. Um, the same boat, man. Same age, kids, soccer. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> so this is from uh, Missy Queering. She says, and this now we're kind of switching some gears, the kind of things that I know is probably right on the tip of your tongue. Any new product reveals or hints of anything new coming down the pipeline for Yeti? We, we have, we're having a lot of fun playing with a lot of stuff. There's nothing that, you know, we just, um, we just announced um, our new PVD collection, which is his element collection. Um, we have a new Roadie 24. So if anybody has the old Roadie 20, we have a new cooler out right now. We just announced Roadie 24. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit taller. Um, the latches allow for one handed, like if it's in the car, it's truly made for that road trip. You can like flip around and unlatch with one hand while you have the wheel or, or it's just hard to turn around. You're in the passenger seat, flip it up. Um, it's, uh, it will fit wine bottles and um, fully standing up, which the old roadie didn't, which is kind of nice. And then, um, but it's 30%, um, yeah, it's like 30% lighter. Um, and so it's, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, legit from a perspective of that quick cooler. You can take to, has a different handle, different carrying system. Check it out, the roadie 24. To me, that's that is um, one of the the best new products we've brought to the to the forefront from a from a cooler perspective. So, but then there's a, we, we have we have some kind of, we just launched the trail a new camp chair too. It's a it's a quad chair, so it folds up into like a smaller cylinder kind of thing. We released a, a more of a lawn chair last year. This this time we did uh, the quad chair that folds up more traditionally what those camp chairs do, and it is. It is, um, it is very much, uh, your durable, never going to have to buy again camp chair. So, nice. and super comfortable. <laughs> nice. So this is the last question and then, you know, we can just kind of touch some other things, but this is from Todd Gibson. Very, very general, but I think, you know, hearing your passion through this, I think you got a pretty good answer. What is your favorite part of the Yeti brand? My favorite part of the Yeti brand is, um, the different communities that come together and it's, it is such a diverse group of people. We have ambassador summits usually once a year and we bring in, you know, our, our rodeo athletes, we bring in our fly anglers, we bring in our conventional anglers, we bring in um, our hunters and our, climbers and our backcountry skiers. And usually there's a group of 20 to 25, 30 of them that all come to a place and we go fishing or we do something and we talk product and we, we just, we just, we, we just get together. And the greatest thing that I find is one, everyone uses the product in a little bit different way. So anybody who says, Hey, this is how I use it. It doesn't mean it's, they, they all, they're all adapt to, the way that, that they work within the specific communities. But the respect level that you see for a pit master in New York and a, and a bulldogger from California and the connections that they make are unbelievable. And when you can sit back and watch these people come together, that normally wouldn't, they normally wouldn't ever talk or they wouldn't, necessarily um, need to meet up bringing them together gives me hope that we, we can live in a world where, where, you know, that we can all get along. I mean, it just does. <laughs> and, um, and it's a, uh, it, it is one of the most interesting things. And I've worked for some other outdoor brands. I've worked for Under Armour and stick of gear out of Bozeman, Montana. And I've, and I've, um, and so you, you, you get, you get regulated into like athletes or you get regulated into hunting for me. And I saw even from runners to football players to basketball players, you saw all of them and yeah, but they're all sort of athletes and they all sort of live in this space. The difference between a brewmaster and, you know, a bull rider and the respect level that they have for each other, really curious, really curious on each other's passions 
is is the greatest thing uh, working about for me working for Yeti. So, man, that'd be awesome to attend. I love that kind of stuff. You know, when you you get to see you're very passionate about marketing and you get to see kind of this shared insight of things that you, you know, you want to think about everything and you want to kind of approach everything. But man, the minute you kind of quiet down and let other people talk about it, you start to learn so much more about what you could your part. I mean, like, you know, for anything that you do, I mean, I, for me in the event business, when it's fun to listen to people, uh, whether I worked on the facility side, the event, event marketing side, and you hear other fans or other people's perspectives, you're like, man, I didn't even think about that. Damn, that's a good idea. You know, they have nothing to do with the business. They yeah. just enjoy the product. And, um, man, that's, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. Actually. It's pretty cool. And then you see each other, then you see them all like commenting on each other's Instagram posts and social posts. And you're like, man, they, that, that wasn't just two days in Venice, Louisiana. That was like, the, that they've made a connection for forever. So it's cool. Yep. Yeah. But think about this too, Bill. I mean, what the, the smart ones get it and they always go, Whoa, you know who brought us together? Yeti. You know, and it just it just keeps expanding their overall brand and what you guys are accomplishing. So that's it's good to hear, man. Glad to hear, and I'm glad that we're partners with you. Um, this is uh, yeah, for sure, us too. Yeah, well, this has been great. You know, I I, I know you, you're a busy dude, and this is fantastic. We ran through these questions, and I um, I'm pretty sure the fans are gonna love this. This is a great you know, it's a great start for what we're doing here with our sponsors and, and getting to know folks. You know, we got a lot of the people lined up. We're bringing on guys from Purina. Um, resist all, nice. you know, just in, in diving into kind of more, let's, let's talk to the hat maker. Let's not just talk to the, the pitch guy. Let's talk to, you know, truly the questions of, you know, the, the, just whatever the product is and very similar to here. Um, you know, you, the more insight you get, the better for you guys, the better for us. And I totally appreciate you coming on. This was, uh, this was, this was really great. Uh, I appreciate you having me anytime we're, we're happy and we're, we're humbled to be involved in this space and, and you know, a, a, anything we can do, we'll, we're up for it. So. Well, cool. Well, thanks for coming on. Uh, stay healthy, stay up and um, good luck with the rest of your adventures, man. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. You too. All right. Thanks, Bill. We want to thank Bill Neff from Yeti for joining NFR Extra. And stay tuned for episode 51 with Chris Bowman, the new president and CEO of the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, and Clinton Anderson from Down Under Horsemanship. Want to experience more of the NFR? Then visit nfrexperience.com. And we invite you to subscribe to NFR Extra on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or wherever you're listening right now. If you like what you've been hearing on NFR Extra, we would love it if you gave us a five-star rating and tell your friends how to subscribe. NFR Extra, all dirt, all rodeo, all year. Gotta make it out to Vegas, where the big boys roam, with the rovers and the racers and the bulls and the browns, and the ladies.